This video comes from Paint Coach, the title, Why Your Portrait Paintings Look Cartoonish and How to Fix Them. So let's see what Paint Coach has to offer here. I have a lot of ideas about this. I think this is one of the primary things that a lot of beginners struggle with, is how do you, how do you get kind of bold and confident, make it look like life, make it feel solid, rather than this sort of uh, weak, soft, cartoonish look. All right, so what are people talking about when they say that their portraits are looking cartoonish? In my experience, I feel that they're talking about the general form or lack of form that they are translating in their portraits. Yes, so one of the important things to getting a really solid form is that you get big blocky shapes. That's what a lot of people lack is this sort of solid shape. A lot of people will go very smooth and blend things out to such a degree that you don't really feel the different planes or the, the separation of these different forms that build up that sort of overarching structure. Portraits don't have a lot of form, therefore they look flat and cartoons are flat. So the problem is lack of form. And how are we gonna solve that problem? We're gonna solve it using three things, shapes, values, and value transitions. Okay, that's interesting. I, I'm guessing he's gonna talk about these big shapes that you can find, you need to find the big shapes, and then you need to actually get the separation of values. As I mentioned, a lot of people will blend it out to such a degree that you really lose the strength and the solidity of having the different planes kind of uh, mapped out. So using the proper values and, and getting the actual contrast between different areas is very important. But let's just break it down one by one. First, shapes. Now he actually did do a good job of identifying big shapes here and these big shapes are indicating the planes and plane changes in the face pretty well. The only problem is I feel like there's not enough shapes which is making certain areas lack form and look flat. I, I think there's a sort of bigger problem here which is just getting these broader shapes in really solidly. That would have gone a long ways here and then you know being more being more confident about it. A lot of these shapes are kind of obscured. It looks almost like it's airbrushed because he's going so soft. Give us some more solidness. Put it on there with, with really bold intention. Let's talk about values. I wish he would have had more values. And if he has more values, he's just going to have more shapes because you're going to put values in using shapes. See that? I'm, I'm not so sure about that. I think actually he would have been better off using the values with more intention and having a higher contrast between values. And that would have actually gone a longer ways because what he's really lacking is this sort of separation between the different planes. I feel he could have pulled out a couple more levels of lighter value. He's got a lot of good darker values and midtone values, but adding a couple more levels of lighter values, I feel like would have really helped define and bring out the form of the face and give it more volume. Yeah, so we're, we're kind of saying the same thing there. I, I think having more contrast would have done the job. He's calling that, you know, adding more values, but either way, you got to have that necessary contrast. You got to really push the separation between the different parts for it to actually feel like they're separate. All right, now let's talk about value transitions. So when we put down all these different shapes and values where different values meet, they're going to create lines. And sometimes these lines can be pretty harsh. This is going to happen a lot with the change in direction of a plane on the face. And a lot of times we don't want these really harsh lines that are created from two different values coming together. So we're going to get rid of those harsh lines by adding transitional value shapes. This is going to better portray the angle changes of the face. So again, considering the way that that was structured, I think he'd actually be better off avoiding those kinds of transitions because that's what it looks like to me is that everything is a little bit too soft. And if you take the opposite approach, if you just go more rigid, more bold, you're gonna end up with a you know happier medium ground and it would have probably suited that guy better to actually go for a more bold approach. So those are some good points from the paint coach. That's what I've seen a lot as well. I've seen the same sort of problems is that a lot of painters will kind of reduce the values or they will use just, just inappropriate values. They're gonna kind of skew in one direction and not realize that they have that full range available to them. So to me, one of the most important things is that you're pre-mixing those values, making sure you have the contrast on your palette and then when you put it into your painting, you put it down with intention and then you leave it there. You don't 
start blending that into the surrounding areas because that's going to just make everything more muddy and less direct. And if you approach it with nice, bold, direct mark making, you're gonna usually end up with a much better result. So a lot of this just comes with practice. It comes with you know, gaining that sort of confidence and learning how to use the materials. But one of the most important things, I think, for getting that solid look is just that you're approaching it with a lot of confidence. You're putting it down and you're not going to second guess it or try to mix it out or blend it. You have to put it down with some intention and be a little bit brave about it. One of the best exercises to increase your ability to find these underlying structures is to do drawing practice. Specifically, I recommend for all of my patrons to do 15 minute drawing practice. This is going to force you to really stick to the basics and to stick to the foundations because in order to get a likeness in just 15 minutes, you really have to go broad. You have to look at these bigger shapes and you're going to be forced to move quickly, which is also going to you know, force you to avoid details. You're gonna to have to go to the more simple approach. The other practice I would recommend on top of that is to paint directly. Don't try to blend and mix and, and get all of these very fine sort of details. Instead, mix up your palette, get the values that are appropriate on your palette, and then use them with intention. Don't sit there and you know blend them out into each other or try to correct the color on the surface. Instead, you take the color, you put it down, if it's horrible, if you absolutely ruined it and it's not even close to accurate, then you can take your palette knife, scrape it off and try again. But most of the time you should just be putting the paint down, leaving it, allow it to dry, sand, and then try again. And you just keep going through it in that way. And then through that process, you're gonna get the blending naturally. But you're gonna be using you know, more confident mark making. So yeah, those are my three pieces of advice on how to avoid making your painting look cartoonish. Thank you, Paint Coach, for prompting this, and thank you for watching. If you have any questions at all, if there's anything you want to see, feel free to leave it in the comments. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching, and have a great rest of your day.